Okay. We have the opportunity to, uh, to introduce Gloria Peters at this point. And you can read all about Gloria on the flyers on your table, on the back of any of the four books that are on the, uh, the table in the back for you to uh, have an opportunity to take home uh, this morning. I asked Gloria if she had anything particular that she wanted to say about her as, as an introduction. And she said, Mike, just tell them why I'm here. And the reason she's here, which is, I think is a great way to introduce somebody, because the reason that she's here is that we are all about business. We're all about promoting our business. And one of the key elements of promoting business today is networking. You're all here because you're networking. So we have an expert, we have an author, we have a television host, we have a person with us today that has credentials that uh, are just incredible, and once again, you can read all about that. But the reason for me that I'm so fired up right now to hear her story is because I had an opportunity to shake her hand and look her in the eye this morning. And when you do that, and I hope you all have an opportunity before you leave, shake Gloria's hand and look her in the eye, you feel that spark. You feel the energy, the power, the professionalism, <laughs> it's all right there. And at this point, I would like to introduce Gloria Peterson. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, this thing called networking, I want to know from you, what is it to you? Tell me, what is networking when you hear that word? Relationships. It's relationships? What else? I'm looking for a particular word. Necessary evil? Necessary evil? <laughs> for some people it can be. <laughs> I did hear the word over here though. What was it over here again? I heard it. Connections. connections. It's about connecting. That's what it's all about. And if you come with any other kind of agenda, then you're probably going to waste your time. Successful networkers know how to connect people. It's not about them, it's about you. And when they make it about you, it comes back to them. I have been in my industry for over 25 years, so I look back on it and I think, I can't believe I've been at it for that long. And prior to that, I was in corporate, and so I was doing all these things. And back when I started, my biggest networking venue was Chambers of Commerce. And if you look into the history of networking, you might go back to the 50s, where it was a chamber of commerce once a month business after hours. And I really feel in my heart that that's where it received its, uh, its momentum, and then all different kinds of networking started to evolve. So when I wrote my book on networking, the first third of it, I wanted you to understand all of your options what kinds of networking. You should be doing three kinds of networking. There is a power to the number three. Keep things in threes. The first one is your chamber, because that's your community. Everyone should be along or participate or be active in a chamber of commerce type of networking event. Even this fly wants to belong. That's flying around my head. The other one is a mixer. Mixers are much more social, less structure, and for those of you who just want to go out and party, they're kind of like that. The third one that you should be a part of is your association, your industry. My industry, the speakers, so the National Speakers Association would be a strong possibility for me, no, a strong must have for me. The American Society of Training and Development, those kind of networking things. Those would be very important because I need to know about my industry and I need to know what's going on and I need to talk to other people. So three different kinds. Now, when you are a connector at a networking event, you move around the room, you meet people, you connect with them, you listen for something, and you look, listen for a word or something, and as you continue to work the room, you remember that person and that one thing. And when you meet somebody else where you think there could be a connection between these two people, you go find that person. Scott, where are you? Scott? Networking, I talked to you this morning. 
stand please. I met Scott and I asked Scott what brings him here. Tell me what brought you here. Improve my networking skills. <laughs> and you wanted to do that by? Making connections. And you wanted to make connections by? Uh, meeting people, getting to know people. And finding out what networking options he has in this community because most recently you moved here from? Tempe. There, see, we did it. Thank you. <laughs> but you listen for that. But I have a cheat sheet, and I'm going to show you right now what I do. And some of you might have seen me do it. I carry my business cards in my left hand so that my right hand's available for shaking hands. And I can get a card out easily. I have a little notepad. Sometimes it's just a three by five card. And I make a note. I wrote down Scott and I wrote down networking because as I work a room and I hear somebody else say, you know, I just started a networking mixer. Perhaps you told me that. Then I'll say, I know you didn't, but we're going to pretend. <laughs> Can we pretend? <laughs> we are pretending now. Okay. Then I will say, I have somebody for you to meet. Then I will go get Scott and I will bring Scott over and I will connect these two people. And they had never met before. But they're probably going to have an amazing conversation as a result of that connection. Got it? Okay. So it's about connecting people. And then make notes, you know, take a, take a moment to step away and maybe write on the back of the business card or something. But write something about that person whose card you receive that will be a, like a trigger for you. So two or three days later when you email them or call them and you give them a point of reference, I met you at the Maricopa County Chamber of Commerce meeting. We talked about, they're going to be so impressed that you remember, but you're looking at your card. First, before I share the strategy, I need to know by a raise of hands, how many introverts in the room? Okay. About half the room is introvert. Hmm. If you are an extrovert, I want you to stand because you won't mind. <laughs> Introverts, take note of these extroverts. Watch them. Follow them. Watch how they network because they love it. They walk in the room. <laughs> They know how to mingle. You can be seated now. They know how to connect. They know how to make that room work. And you watch them. And you learn from them. And the next thing you know, you have transitioned from introvert to extrovert. Because you're watching somebody who does it well. If you have a strategy, work the strategy. I'm going to give you one that's very easy. There's only three parts to it. You work that strategy. That strategy's in your head. And trust me, it will be a lot easier and the introvert, the, you will look like an introvert. You might be an introvert on the inside, excuse me, but you will look like an extrovert. That's what I was trying to say. But let's get some awkwardness out of the way first before we do that. There's a couple things that happen at networking events. You mean well. It's unintentional, but it's rude. I have your attention. And this is what oftentimes happens. They're busy talking. Oh, Joy Ashley, yeah, I have been looking all over for part? you. I've been looking for this chance to talk to you. How did that make you feel? <laughs> oh, you just pushed me out. Yeah. <laughs> he was making the million dollars. Deal. I know, <laughs> but you're doing it. You get what happens here. See, but if you get so excited about somebody you've been wanting to see, or maybe you walk in the room. And you look around, and you are the only person you know. She was talking about gang violence, and that just exactly what happened. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you spot the one person you do know. And you rush over to that person to save you, correct? And you run right in, and you totally ignore the fact there was a conversation in place. How many have had that happen to them? Please, and how, how does it make you feel? Okay, it's unintentional. Here's a better way to do it. Okay, resume. <laughs> this is the polite way. You walk over. 
Hi. Hi. May I join you? Yes. My name is Gloria Peterson. Nice to meet you, Gloria. I'm Joy Ashley. With the Joy police Ashley department. with the police department. <laughs> Hi, Gloria. Anthony? I'm Anthony. Anthony Smith. Smith. <laughs> nice to meet you. And then we start talking. Now, how'd that make you feel? County supervisor. County supervisor. <laughs> okay. How'd that make you feel? Better? Oh, yeah. Oh, certainly. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Give him a hand. Mm -hmm. Give him a hand. Now, you're going to face each other. Now, when you walk into a room, observe the people. Make note who looks approachable and who does not. <laughs> Their body language will tell you. And one simple little cue that I'm going to share with you. These two people are standing on a square. They are shoulder to shoulder. When you're standing on a square, ignore me. When you're standing on a square, I call it a square because they're face to face. Do not disturb. There's a sign here that says, do not disturb. They're engaged in the conversation. I would not bother them. I would not approach them. However, when one of the two is really done with this conversation, and she really does want to move on, you know what you just naturally do without even knowing you're doing it? You automatically will angle your body away. This person might not have changed her position, but this person would have go from this. So what we call it is door closed, door open, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. And what she's done is given you an invitation to come over and interrupt. Remember, this is networking. It's not a closed door conversation. Sometimes we have to be shoulder to shoulder in a closed door because we're, we're on point. We want to finish our on point. But when we're done with our on point, let others come in. And that's a way for you to let others know that it's okay to come in now. Thank you. When you enter a room, do not do this. Now you don't know what to do with you. You rushed in. It's like it's a very hot day, and you see a pond or a lake, and you decide, I'm just going to dive in and cool off. You dive in, and all of a sudden, you discover you're not touching bottom. And now you're really worried. Don't do that. I saw a few people do exactly what I'm going to show you. You did it, by the way. I was three weeks without taking. <laughs> no, 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 you did not, you did not do that. You did it the right way. You did it the right way, okay? <laughs> okay, what you want to do, this is what he did. I'm, I'm sorry, I, give me your name again. Toady. Toady, Toady? Yes. Okay, Toady. This is what Toady did, because I was watching and trying to pick up different people for different things. When Toady arrived, he walked in, walked away, and he stopped. Then he saw the bacon. <laughs> but the point is, he stopped. When you walk into a room, move away from the door, stop for a second. Take in the room. Observe the people. Make a decision as whom do you want to approach. Do not go for the food and beverage first. You really shouldn't. You should come across as if you are there to greet and meet, not to eat. Eventually, you get to eat. But I would try to connect with maybe two or three people before I ate. Now that I walked into the room, I've made a decision. I've decided I want to approach the three over there that I have standing up there. Now, when you make a decision as to whom you're going to approach, you will walk with purpose. There's something that comes across very confident based on perception when you walk with purpose to a group. So step two is to walk with purpose to the group that I have identified as a group by, based on the body language. And I purposely select three. Unless I see two people standing at angles, I will select three. And that's because two out of the three are more engaged in conversation than the third person is. I call it odd man out. So I walk out, try to find out who is not as engaged. I won't barge in like I showed you earlier. But I will walk in, and I would try to make eye contact. I will walk, use your eyes. Use your eyes. They're powerful. Your eyes are very powerful. 
Walk people with your eyes. So when I walk, I will walk, I will look here, I will look here, I will look here. The minute somebody looks at me with their eyes, the minute I get an eye contact, the second, the nanosecond, I will say, may I join you? Absolutely. They never say no. Did you ever <laughs> And we're going to think they're going to say, well, of course not. You know, this isn't high school. I'm sorry. You know, of course they're going to say, I say, may I join you? It's hard to say not to. And the minute, because I do it, the minute I get somebody's eye. And she's the one not as involved in conversation. These two were very involved. Could you tell? They were much more involved than she was. She was kind of listening. And coming up, may I join you? My name is, and I go first and last name, Gloria Peterson. And you Shell Abbott. Sha? Shell. Shell? Yeah, like the gas station. Abbott? <laughs> very good. Did you hear? And I didn't even coach her. That was very good. Again, you are? Deb Leone, Leone, nice to meet you. Euphemia Weeks. Euphemia Weeks. Did I say that correctly? Perfect. Wonderful. First and last name. Because there are a lot of people with the first name. But when you say the last name, you connect the family to the name, the heritage to the name. Because that's what our last name is, our heritage, for the most part. And you're there, remember, you might meet a lot of mics in a room, but if you hit the la get the last name, then when you go through the cards and you see the last name, you're going to recognize it better. Now you get engaged in conversation, and then there comes a point where you're going to want to leave. This is where people mess up. People remember things. People, let me put it this way, people remember how things end <coughs> way longer than they remember how they began. So you want to make it a memorable exit. So as I'm done, if I'm going to hand out a business card, I won't just say, here's my card, here's my card, here's my card. I will say, may I have your card? I would like to stay in contact. And as they give me their cards, I will then say, may I offer you mine? Because I put you ahead of me when I do that. And I make you more important than I offer mine as you know, a closing <laughs> gesture. Then I would say, it's been a real pleasure. I opened with a handshake. I am going to close with a handshake and a business card exchange. Then I will walk away, and I will stop, and I will look for who else I can approach. Thank you. Give me a hand. Stand up for a minute. I want you to pretend for a second that you're arriving. You have not arrived in this room yet. You're rushed. You got up late, you're hurried. You walk into a room very hurried, very rushed, very anxious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You will send that message with your handshake. It'll be weaker and not as confident as normal, and you won't look as confident. These things happen. So there's a little trick I'm going to share with you. And everything I'm sharing with you is in my books, step by step by step. I want you to, you're already doing it. You're a step ahead of me. <laughs> I want you to put your hands behind your back and grab your thumb. Put your hands behind your back before you walk into a room. If you feel hurried, if you feel a little anxious, upset, you're just not feeling confident. Now I want you to grab your thumb and, you, and grab your thumb so that you're straightening up your arms. The minute you do that, you're going to put the shoulders back automatically. The chin will automatically become parallel to the floor. Now on a freeze play, I want you to release the thumb without changing the shoulders or the chin's relationship to the floor. Now, you are, whoa, it looks powerful in here. You will feel more confident now. You will override that insecurity, that rush, that anxiety. You will actually override it by getting your body into alignment. Then walk tall like you're a puppet on a string. And then walk tall and proud into that room. Trust me, the handshake will automatically be stronger because the hand delivers what the body is feeling. Mm -hmm. And that would, makes it more memorable. Stop and study the room, get your bearings, and then move in. I know you too. Okay, I'm going to have you do an exit. 
You're going to exit each other. Okay. And exchange business cards. We did already. Okay. And now you're going to go different directions, and you're going to hit up somebody else. Yes, you are. But you're going to introduce yourself, first last name. You know, my name is first last name, and you are da 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 like that. Okay. And go this way, you that way. Okay. How do you feel about doing an exit here? I can do an exit. Okay. So you do an exit. Yes, okay. All right. And then and then you just walk away and then you kind of study everybody in the room and you decide, yeah, see where you want to go, where the body language looks approachable for you. And since it kind of left you idle then, then you kind of walk and do your own thing too. Okay. They're not wanting to go back to their tables. <laughs> <laughs> I know I hate to break up this little gathering, but you'll get another opportunity. <laughs> working. They're, they're working. Okay. If I can have everyone's attention again, we have about five minutes. What I'd like to hear from you is how did this little exercise help you? Can any, would anyone mind sharing how it helped them? I was able to... Uh, share my information and get information on a nonprofit organization that helps families and I really got a lot out of it. That may not have happened if we had not had this exercise. There you go. Yay. Okay. Who else can share? Okay. Not working. I'm sorry. Are oh, you still working? <laughs> okay. Because I'm an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want to know what our conversation was? I want to know how it helped you, the exercise helped you oh, get okay. into that conversation. So the exercise, because uh, we had our person from outdoors come introduce herself to all of us, and we found out, you know, she has a food bank and how that operation works, and it was very interesting. They serve 400 families. Mm. Um, Wonderful. Thank you. One more. Are people learn, are you sharing? Um, I think the way this helped me is just some of the things that I already was doing that you were saying. So I got a little bit of confidence more in myself and some of the things I was doing and then added a few more skills. Good. Thank you. Again, when you're feeling a little awkward or uncomfortable, you walk into that room and you are the only person that you know. That can be mind boggling. Just put the strategy in your head. I'm going to walk into the room. Before you walk in, you're going to straighten up your body line so the handshake is confident. Make sure that confidence is in your body. Make sure you're feeling it. Do whatever you have to to feel it. Walk into the room. Study. Take it in. When you do that, actually what's happening is the person furthest away that you can't even see is noticing this confidence. Just enter the room. And it exuded a certain amount of presence and it made that person want to know who is that and that's really what you want to happen then you look at how people are positioned in the room is the door closed or is the door open if there's a small group then you know one person is not as involved in conversation as another and you should be approaching groups of people that you don't know, that you've never met. Don't go to the home base, you know, people who you're familiar with. You catch up with them later. When you make your introduction, first and last name as much as possible, even though I know we're a first name society for the most part, but it really helps cement that name in your head. It really does help. And to repeat the name back if you messed up like I did a few times, I repeat it back until I get it right. A name's a very important thing. And it could be you're the first person in a very long time, that very long time, that has taken the time to get the name right. And they have probably had to deal with people mispronouncing their name over and over and over again. But when they encounter somebody who takes the time to get it right, they're like, wow. Because that's important to them, and they're going to want to help you as a result. Have your conversation, and if someone joins your group, be kind and let them know what the conversation on the table already is so that they can join in. And sometimes conversation's not about talking. Sometimes it's just about listening to see what you can carry and how you can connect people with other people in the room. 
and then do your exit. And once you've done that with maybe one, three times, could be one person, a group, or whatever, then go for a beverage or cocktail or whatever it is that when you're hungry. Because then you're, you're kind of ready to kind of relax a little bit. The strategies that I just shared with you, a little bit in this book, especially the um, posture, walking in with presence, that, but a lot in this one. And these books represent over 25 years of out there doing it. So I'm kind of sharing my legacy with you in all of these books. I got carried away with each one. Each one kept getting bigger. I hope you enjoyed this, found it beneficial. And the next time you come to one of these events, you will know how to enter that room and make it work for you as you work the room. Thank you.